Well, right now you have um, the handout there. Uh, you put in your three radians. Hopefully you put um, uh, one radian. Two. Oh, who said who said two radian? Now, whoever the person was. Um, I wonder if it, will it feel will it feel like it adds up to like six radian? I mean, by putting one, two, three. So I'll put I still put one radian again. Oh, like black, it doesn't really show so well. Here's what I want you to put above the whole arc. I want you to put. Am I doing that? I want you to put um, pi, for those who aren't here, now instead of saying three, the number three, I want you to use the um, letter pi. Pi just means three and some, so for simplicity. Whenever you hear pi, there are three is what you should be thinking. And so let's say if um, I have this table back here where uh, Efren is, there are pi students. Um, uh, at this table here, there's one less than pi students. Here, there's one more than pi. I just want you to feel that pi is three. You're going to see pi around a whole lot. Uh, some exercise we're doing today. Step one, pi just means three. So on the big arc, I'm going to see if you can put pi radian. So let's see if you can do this. Will mine go down? So uh, can, you, can you draw an arrow? Draw an arrow over the top. All the way around, and put pi, put a three right above that guy, and put pi radian. I wish my radian thing could go all the way across. It looks like it's just doing it on this side. But I wish I could put the word radian all the way across. Um, the idea is there, of course, you just uh, get that feel that when they say pi radians, which they're going to say a lot, you need to know it just means three of them. Now, they're not going to rewrite pi as a three, uh, but they're going to use pi a lot. As a matter of fact, the other thing that we're going to watch, a little reminder video on degrees, I'm going to have you slice this pizza into slices. And, um, here's what I want you to do as best you can with a dotted line uh, from your first radian. <laughs> See if you can put maybe a dotted line in. It may wind up looking a little bit messy. This might be a mistake, so I'm going to test it out on you all. Hopefully it is not a mistake. Do you have a one today with the class? Uh, I do. I do. Okay. Not, a, not a two B of a two B. Um, so, yeah, this is the only two B. So this radian here, the thing I want you to know is there's a degree. If this were a pizza, the radian is, in fact, the crust. We know that. But for every slice of pizza, we know when we slice it, yeah, you get some crust, but you get the rest of the pizza. And the part where the um, pizza meets right in the middle, again, because I'm going to use this, is called the central angle. So I'm going to put down here. And where do I want to put central angle? And maybe I won't write it in right now. Maybe I'll figure out a way to do it, because I don't want to mix it up with what I really want, which is where the pizza meets in the middle, at the center. Uh, there's a certain degree that goes there. Now you know the degrees begin from here at zero degrees, much like a clock. Um, we're at three o'clock right now, but on a unit circle, which is what we're dealing with. Uh, and that part I'm willing to write in here. How do they know it's a unit circle? Um, because the radius is one unit. Um, should I squeeze that in? Sure, I'll put uh, one unit. Do you use the word unit when you don't know if it's like you mean one? inch or one foot or one meter um like which unit are you talking about well when you don't know which unit you're talking about as long as it's one just say one unit because the radius I'll put radius and all of this um again is still with the idea that when it's time to solve the problem please find the radian in the degree 30. Please find the radian given the degree 45. The steps are going to be kind of simple. I just want you to feel kind of what they're saying. Um, with uh, this unit circle, which is what this whole thing is called, because the radius is just one unit, um, the degree is always right in here. Um, oh, that looks like a zero. Uh, let me erase that for now and put this. From the beginning all the way to this wall right here. Now, some of you know stuff. Uh, how many degrees is it from here to here, that letter L? Right. Yeah. 
good old fashioned 90 degrees. Normally they put the big L, so I'm gonna put 90 degrees on this big one. It's gonna be way messy. When I redo this again at some point in the future, like, yeah, that was way too messy. This red one here, which goes to that first radian, which is what I want to get to, is if you had to guess, guesstimate, about how many degrees it is from here to the green line that makes up that first radian, what might someone get? Well, and don't say it out loud. Uh, think about it for a moment, then I'm going to have you maybe say it to a neighbor, like, how, if from here to here is 90 degrees. How many is it from here to the radian itself? Don't say to me. All right, say to a neighbor, if you were to guess, um, how much you think it might be. Um, it's not going to be neat. Um, right. Say to a neighbor, say to a neighbor, then we'll have someone say out loud what they think and see if there are any different answers. All right, what do we think that the degree is going to be? 60. Right, here is 60. Any other um, choices for that? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go with the 60, but technically, the 60 is wrong. There's an exact answer that goes there, but why am I going to go with the 60? Because I just want you to feel that thing. In other words, um, the idea of what I'm trying to do now is conceptual. In other words, if you get close enough to it in terms of, okay, that's about 60. If you're just like, oh, that's 110, like, uh, no, you're crazy. But just the idea that it's um, 60, I'm going to put that one in. I'm almost going to put it in quotes. So here it goes. Uh, it is 57 point something. When you actually solve, when you actually when you actually solve the um, the problem, for now that 60 will do. Um, one radian gets you the 60. Um, so then some of you might be able to figure out. And we'll go with the 60 just for even numbers. Please put a dotted line next to that second plate. In. You're going to be given a, an equation, uh, uh, a ratio that's going to help you solve the problem. And this is my hope of helping you like, oh, that's why they put that number with that one. Got it. The second one, let's see if I can make this thing go, rotate all the way around with, uh, now it's getting way too messy, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. Going all the way here. <laughs> okay. For two radians, how much is that uh, degree going to be? Uh -huh. Is that again? Yeah. Uh, from here all the way to here. Uh, 120. Uh, again, you will note the slice of pizzas happen to be exactly the same amount. That is because your uh, radians, your uh, yarn, are exactly the same amount. They're all the same amount. So this second guy gets to be 120. And um, if you can, this is going to be a mess. Try and do one last degree. It always opens here to the end. And I'm going to play a little video on just angles and degrees just to remind us. Uh, more about hearing the words. In other words, oh, degrees, uh, central angles, uh, which, by the way, for testing purposes. And right now I'm just saying, oh, the angle here is 60 degrees. Oh, the angle here is 90 degrees. For testing purposes, they will ask, they will use the phrase central angle. A central angle is an angle whose corner or vertex is right in the center of the circle. So they'll say, what is uh, the measure of this central angle? Like, oh, 60 degrees. But for some of you here, central angle. Um, the central angle here, 90 degrees. The central angle, I was going to write that central angle. I wish we could write that somewhere. Um, and then the last one that goes all the way around. This guy, he's one of the most important ones. Okay. Again, that is the third of the three radians. Or the pi radians. Uh, and of course, how much is he? That last one, someone? Yeah, All right. So here's what they need to know. If someone asks you uh, what um, central angle goes with one radian, yeah, you can say 60. It'd be a little bit off, but they get that you know. If they ask you what is the central angle that goes with two radian, well, you just double that. It's 120. No big deal. Here's the important one. Let's say you forget the other two. This last one, you must remember. This is the one that we're going to use a lot uh, by the end of the day, and that is, what is the central angle that goes with 3 radian or pi radian? And it is 180. So here's what we're going to write. Uh, 180 degrees. 
goes with. I don't want to, this little symbol is just wrong. That's this one I'm put right now. I'm gonna put pi radians. Somebody already like pi radians. I wish I could just say three radians, but they'll never say three radians. <laughs> they're always gonna say pi radians. As a matter of fact, they're actually gonna write a fraction that you're gonna be using later, and the fraction is. They're going to put the fraction pi over 180. When are you going to use that? You're going to use that eventually when they say, please tell me what degree, what angle goes with the certain amount of radians that they'll give you. So they're going to give wacky numbers. They won't just make it like one, two, three. No, no, no. They're going to say, um, please find the degree that goes with 2 pi over 3 or 2 thirds pi. They're going to say, hey, what degree? goes with this, it goes with that, I don't even know what that is. Um, in the end, we're going to use this fraction to mess around with that one. I'll show you the steps. It's going to be nice and easy. Either you're going to multiply and divide, or you're going to divide and then multiply. So it's not going to be a big deal uh, to get the final answer. What do I want them to know? Pi radians. That's how many radians? Three. Uh, what's the special number that goes with three or pi radians? One eighty. That's the big thing I want to know on a unit circle. All right, let's do a little quick um, remote for moments. Uh -huh. So what we're learning here is what the unit circle, like what's uh -huh. inside of this? You are learning the vocabulary that is oh. used when you talk about a unit circle. Oh, okay. Um, the vocabulary for the crust of a pizza of a unit circle is mm -hmm. called radians. The inside are called degrees. And sometimes I'm going to give you the degree, tell me how much crust I have. Sometimes I'll give you the crust, and you tell me what degree goes with it. You have to go back and forth. That's the main thing in regular talk. But once they give you problems like this, and they say, what is the um, degree that goes with this? You might be like, I'm not sure what you're asking. But the truth is this. As long as you see pi, you know you're being given the radian. That's the only time you'll see pi. You're given the radian, part of the crust. If they gave you the degree, Obviously, there's no radian there. They're asking you, they're giving you the middle and saying, hey, could you turn that into something that has a uh, number of pi in it? Uh, so we'll mess around with that in just a second. Uh, now let's just uh, relax for a moment and watch a piece of the video. Um, heard it. So it's volume up enough. Uh, back table. Let's take the light off for just a moment. Just a reminder of angles and degrees. Hi, welcome to Math Antics. In our last geometry video, we learned some important things about angles. One of the things we learned was that angles come in different sizes. Some are big and some are small. Well, in this video, we're going to learn how we can tell exactly how big or small an angle is. We're going to learn how angles are measured. You probably already know a lot about measurement, like how you measure how long something is with a ruler or a tape measure. And the units you would use would be inches or centimeters or something like that, right? But when it comes to angles, we can't use a ruler to measure or use units like centimeters. And that's because angles aren't about length. Angles are about rotation. And to measure how much something is rotated, we use a special unit called degrees. Now hold on a second. I thought degrees were used to measure how hot or cold something is. You know, like, it's 100 degrees outside today. Ah. Now that is a good point, you smart looking fella. The word degree is used for a lot of different things, so it can be a little confusing sometimes. It makes more sense if you just think of a degree as a small amount of something. For temperature, a degree is a small amount of heat. But for angles, a degree is a small amount of rotation. And there's a special math symbol for degrees that we use instead of writing the word degrees over and over. It's this little circle that you put after the number and up near the top. To see how we use degrees to measure angles, let's get two rays that point in exactly the same direction. Then, let's put one ray directly on top of the other one, so it looks like there's only one ray there, even though there's really two. Now, let's take the ray on top and rotate it just a tiny amount counterclockwise. This point on the ray will be our axis, or center, of rotation. It's just like the point at the center of a clock that stays stationary while the hands rotate around it. 
our rays now form an angle that measures one degree. And as you can see, one degree is a really small angle. We need to zoom in on it to see that it really is an angle. In fact, you might wonder if there could be any angles smaller than one degree. Yep, there sure are. And we saw one just a second ago. Before we rotated our top ray, when our rays were exactly on top of each other, that was a zero degree angle. And there's a whole range of tiny fraction angles in between zero and one degree. But we aren't going to learn about them in this video. Instead, we're going to keep on rotating our top ray and watch the angle get bigger and bigger. This special lead out here will tell us how many degrees our angle measures. Now let's start out slow. One degree, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now let's hold it there for a second. So this is what ten degrees looks like. Ten degrees? That's freezing! <laughs> Guess you're not as smart as I thought after all. So we can see that a 10 degree angle is still a very small angle. So let's keep going, but a little bit faster this time. Right, that's 15 degrees, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 45. Now 45 degrees is a special angle because it's exactly half of a right angle. If we draw a right angle in the same spot, you can see that our ray cuts it into two equal parts. So if 45 degrees is half of a right angle, can you guess how many degrees a right angle is? Let's keep on rotating to see if you're right. 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. Yep, a right angle is exactly 90 degrees. And that is super important to memorize because right angles are used all the time in geometry. Okay, do you remember from our last video that all angles less than a right angle are called acute angles? So that means that all the angles we've seen so far that are between 0 and 90 degrees, like 10, 30, 45, 60, and so on, are acute angles. But if we keep on rotating our ray past 90 degrees, we'll start forming obtuse angles because they're greater than a right angle. Ready? Here we go. 100 degrees, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, and 180. Aha! Does this look familiar? Yep, it's a straight angle like we learned about in the last video. The rays point in exactly opposite directions, and the angle they form is 180 degrees. And that's also a really important angle measurement to memorize. Now before we go on, let's quickly review the important angles and regions that we've looked at so far. Our angle measurement is 0 degrees when the rays point in exactly the same direction. It's 90 degrees when they're perpendicular and form a right angle. And it's 180 degrees when they point in opposite directions and form a straight angle. In this region, between 90 and 180, we find a two angles. And in this region, between 0 and 90, we find acute angles. One important acute angle is 45 degrees, since it's half of a right angle. All right, let's continue rotating past 180 degrees. Our angle readout keeps getting higher, and the next important angle we come to is this one, 270 degrees. It also forms a right angle, but it points down instead of up. Let's keep going, because another really important angle is just around the corner, and it's coming up right about now. We rotated our ray all the way around the axis, and now it's back to where we started. Now you might be wondering, if we're back to where we started, then why is our counter reading 360 degrees instead of 0 degrees like before? And the answer is that even though our rays are back to the same place, we had to rotate our top ray 360 degrees to get there. And you can see that our angle arc now forms a complete circle. So 360 degrees is the angle that represents a full circle. Rotating 360 degrees brings you all the way around the circle to the point that you started. Okay, now that you know what degrees are, and you've seen how they relate to the size of an angle, we need to learn how to actually measure an angle without this fancy readout that we have. Just like a ruler can be used to measure the length of a line, a special tool called a protractor can be used to measure angles. A protractor is similar to a ruler, but it's curved into a half circle so that it there, can measure the rotation uh, of the axis. To to get there. A protractor also has well, a straight edge. Just remind you of those special dot degrees dot. and those angles. If you can hit the backlight, just the, um, the one close to the door. Again, part of that was to just have a okay, bounce around the house. You're about to get a special sheet um, before exam. We're a step away from the um, 
So I'm actually solving some of these, but I want your brain to know what your answer kind of means. So we're going to see if we can, um, again, that's why with some of these, um, I don't want to So each one of these you have is a unit circle. Um, name, uh, class, color, upper right hand corner. Let's see if we can do it before, uh, hopefully, before it gets you. Eventually, we may have you use a highlighter to kind of show it. Um, so you may want to grab a highlighter, but we'll probably use your pencil initially to try and mess around with this. The name class color. Um, people just came. I don't think uh, got a folder. I did it. I asked for it. All right. Let's see if I can find the sheet, and then let's see what we can. He was so mad that I rejected if my sheet is here. I went back to this original one while I'm going to go try and find where I put um, where I put that. I'm going to erase a little bit on mine so that you kind of know what we're going to try and do on that sheet because the answer you're about to start getting will refer to some of this. In other words, let's see if I can um, bring you down too far. All right. We know that going all the way around um, the top from beginning to 180, we know that this whole red arc is pi. It's pi radian. It's three of those things. Yes, it's all the same color now, says the green and red. Um, if I ask you up a full pi that's on top here. Where would you find, and this is what we're going to kind of mark on these little sheets, where would you find half, oh, some space, I some space. Where would you find um, half of that pi? Uh, now, she said a little sooner than I want her to, uh, but, but it's true. Um, if I ask you, hey, where is half of pi of the whole thing? Of course, you just travel along until so you got about right here. Um, and at this point here, this is one half of pi. When you get radians, they're always going to use a fraction and always talk about the entire pi. They're not going to break it up into individual pieces anymore. So, at 90 degrees, um, you're at half of pi. The other thing that's important as you start getting some deep answers that you're about to get is, and I'll uh, take a hand, is that they're never going to write the fraction one half in front of pi. They're going to write it this way. If ever there's a number that goes um, with pi after, pi goes on top, and it looks like this. They're going to write it like that. Um, you can, even though you're about to do this uh, a few times, uh, so you may not have to. Um, the last part is that one in front of pi, even though pi is just three, and yes, we know that, they still treat pi like a letter, like an X, or like a Y. And what is true is, you never write one in front of an X. You never write one in front of a Y. They're going to write this one half of pi as just the actual pi over 2. Why is he saying this? Because as you are about to start solving some equations, uh, they start giving some of them to get the answer to. Number one, they're going to ask you to figure out portions of pi. Like, in this case, half of pi. Um, for our purposes, I don't know if we need the degree. Um, the other thing is, though, in order to get the right fraction, which you're about to try, uh, we have to divide this whole top half of the circle into equal parts. In other words, uh, when I get my uh, paper back, 
And we're going to divide it into, we're going to try and find out what 2 thirds pi is. To get 2 thirds pi, um, somehow this whole top half of the circle, I'd have to chop it up into three equal pieces. Uh, now, I know you have a bunch of writing on yours, which is why we're trying to use these other guys, which I'm going to bring it up in a second. Uh, I'm going to say it, let your brain relax while I look for it. Um, but essentially, if I had to chop this whole top half into three equal pieces, I would kind of go like like right about here, kind of like right about here. And so, again, if I need to mark on here where two-thirds pi is, there's the first piece, there's the second piece. Two-thirds pi is going to be right about here. Two-thirds pi. Pi. Will they ever put the fraction in front of pi? No, they won't. Well, where am I supposed to put pi? Pi always gets to jump on top. So right here we have found two-thirds pi. Now what I'm trying to get you to see is when you get your answer to the question, this will be the answer, two-thirds pi. Like, what did I get? Like, what is two-thirds pi? All that's saying is, on the top half of the circle, if I need to go two-thirds of the way from beginning, to the end, I would wind up right, bing, right there, two-thirds of pi. If they said one-half pi, or pi over two, which is the way they'll say, they won't put the one-half in front. Like, what is it, like, what did I just get, like, what's pi over two? Pi over two is, if I were to start from the very beginning, and I want to go halfway around the top, halfway would be, bing, right there. Um, so. Uh, what I'm going to have you do is we're going to put certain fractions of pi, and on those little circles, we're going to try and see, can you kind of guess, maybe you and the person next to you, or even at your table, where would that end up on the um, top half of the circle? Uh, after that one, we'll actually solve some of these, so that you get the answer, like, oh, the answers are easy to get, and now I know what they mean. Uh, all right, the first one was one half pi. Um, I'm writing to I prefer writing with that. All right. Uh, the first one was one half pi. Right here. <laughs> the second one. Um, the second one was what? One two thirds. What was the second one? Two thirds. Wait, how do you explain? Where is two thirds pi? Or pi or two pi over three over five? Uh, should be the second one. No, I mean, like, where are the. Oh, I'm going to put that up in just a second. Yeah. What was the third one? Was it one third pi? I'm just going to put in the first four, and then um, for those who tried it, you'll get to see for those who didn't, you'll get to see what it should look like. Okay, why is he writing it twice? Why is he writing it twice? Close. Um, he's writing it twice because he wants you to feel that though the official way they're going to write it, the second one, pi over three, pi over two, Two, th two um, pi over three. Yeah, they are fractions in front of pi. How much of pi you want, but they never write a fraction like that um, with pi. The, uh, this one was what one one fourth. All right, one fourth pi. All right, let's get some answers. See. Um. All right, and I, I think this will be the last time I write just a fraction in front of it. Uh, let me actually just put it. Alright, now that we have it together, shh, now that we have it together, here we go. The first one we have, there it is, take a look at the answer, see how you feel about it. That's half of pi, half of the whole top half. Uh -huh. The second one, how do I get two thirds pi? Well, you have to chop it into three equal pieces. It turns out these special lines that you see up there, they're specially placed so that if you had to chop things into certain pieces, 
Uh, it's there. I didn't tell you. I just want to see what you would get, but it goes like this. To chop it into three separate pieces, this guy here, this guy here, or the two lines. Those are actually 60 degrees. Um, those lines are 60. The little small ones, you can see the first ones, there are 30 degrees. And the little guy in the middle, he's 45. But here's the deal. How do I get across to that second one? Take a look at it, take a look at it. Then the new one, the new one that you didn't have already. Um, again, to chop this into about um, three equal pieces, it's just like that up there. Okay. And in green, the answer for this one goes just to right here. If you highlighted it with, um, and you got the wrong answer, put the highlight, um, on a darker highlight maybe, uh, over the correct answer. What is it that he wants in the field though? When you start getting these answers, pi over four, uh, pi over three, it really is just saying, I want a fraction of the top piece. <clears throat> maybe I want just one third of it. Maybe I want just one fourth of it. All right. Um, Say again, please. The yes, part. the answer is the green part. Oh, okay. And then on this one, one fourth turns out to get one fourth. There's one. There's two. There is three. Now again, I don't necessarily expect you to have gotten them like oh click click click. I'm just. But as you're seeing it, um, the key is here's one part of the pizza. Two three, and four. If you can um, cut it to four equal pieces, plus one fourth pie, just one of those. The answers are also on the paper. So. You think so? Yeah, they're very small. Right, 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 yeah. I didn't want to mention that ahead, so uh, uh, you wouldn't have to mention I didn't notice that. that. I did. Wow. Right. Take it in, write those in, write those in. And now let's actually do some of the math work that will get you the answer. Here it comes. Let's get on the handout that will get on some of the... Please write the following. Please write the following. With your highlighter, please highlight... Oh, no, it's not going to let me go. Degrees and radians. Please highlight that one. Degrees and radians is the main thing that they'll be asking you. Uh, and the way they're going to ask it here, it's going to be straightforward, on your um, assessment and the other hand I'm going to give you, they're going to give you a picture, and they're going to say, uh, what is the measure of arc BC? Well, what's the what? They're basically going to say, how much of the crust are you getting in special writing? Once we get there, that's the version where it's going to land. But let's get the answer here so that when you see that, you go, like, oh, just do that. So how do I go from degrees to radians? I uh, hear this was in the beginning of physics. Unit three. Unit three of physics. Uh, we're going to multiply a fraction uh, to go to the, um, from degrees to radians. Pi on the top. Yeah. One eighty on the bottom. Write down that fraction, please. Write down that fraction. Do me a favor. Even though we're going to do one to get. Even though I'm going to do one together, um, on this section down here, where we're going from radius to degrees, I wish you would almost highlight in a different color. Like, if you highlight in the same color, you'll think, oh, it's the same thing twice. It's not. If you could, switch with someone, get a different color. Um, and then this one. The fraction gets flipped. So we're going to do one, one together. So right now I'm just giving you the fraction that you'll need. It's not that supposed to be multiplied by. So it's 30 degrees times pi over 1. Well, let me show it. Let me show it. Then see if um, what you're saying is what I'm saying. Yes, uh, No. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get one answer. So you can see. To get 30 degrees into radians, uh, you simply do this. 
You write the 30. You make a plus sign. This is called dimensional analysis, at least I remember that from chemistry in high school, at least that's what that teacher called it. What are you going to put over here on the other side of the plus sign? You're going to put your fraction that you're going to be converting. I wish I had a different color. Well, let me write in a different color. Pi and the 180. Calculators are out there now because to turn this degree of 30, uh, I wish I could. Hey, do me a favor if you could, those who have the skills, make a little mini little circle. Put your little plus sign in it, your little uh, circle, and then if I, where's my little pen color? Try to put where 30 degrees might be. See if you can write that down, see if you can write that down. Because what they're asking you is this, if I gave you this little slice of pizza, that 30 degrees, again, they're still asking us the same question. Come on, come on. How much of the crust in green are you actually getting? That's what radians is saying. And radians will always take it out of the total pie. Some fraction of pie is what you're getting. Either if you go all the way to 180, you got the whole thing. You got one pie. But normally they don't go all the way to 180 because that's too easy. They're always going to say, well, you want 30 of it? And then, yeah, like, how much is that? Well, that's about a uh, one sixth of pie. You got like one out of six equal pieces. Here's what we do. You multiply the top, normally divide by the bottom, but for our purposes, we're just going to reduce the fraction. What do you mean we're just going to reduce the fraction? 30 times pi is 30 pi. That 3, which is what pi is, we're never going to fix that. We're just going to leave that as is. The 180 goes on the bottom. Now, if you're afraid of fractions, this is where your life gets rough. Um, but of course, you're going to ask, hey, what number goes into 30 and 180? But here's the beauty. 60. If there are zeros, you can actually cancel out those zeros like this. So really, the fraction that you're reducing is 3 over 18. Um, now i got to move my circle because I ran out of space. Um, I'll put it down here. The number that goes into 3 and um, 180, of course, is going to be 3. 3 goes into the top, and I heard the number out there, 3 goes into the bottom, using up all my space. The top is a 1 and a pi. Uh -huh. So it's so 30 degrees is uh -huh. The bottom is going to be a 6. Am I going to keep that one next to the pie? No. Right. It's just going to be pie over six. Now, I don't know how much space you used. Can I get a... All right. Pause. Take a look and see what we wrote. He is on the board. He's like, take it off. I mean, sorry, uh, C is on the board. Here comes E. We're going to do E and G. Don't do G yet. Here comes E. So how do we convert the gradients to, uh, oh, do we multiply by 180? Just do the opposite, right? Just do the opposite. So we multiply here it comes, there it comes. Watch it first, watch it first, see if you're okay. There's my plus sign for my dimensional analysis. The fraction, which mine has disappeared now, to go from radians to degrees, that pi over 180 is now um, 180 over pi. Uh, so let's see, I know I'm in their way so they don't get to see. Uh, let's see if I can move that. This one, your calculator comes in handy. So again, to do this guy, we're doing... Nope, won't even do anything over there. Fine, where is it? The... 
I'm going two degrees. Thank you. What am I doing that is not? Right. Take a look at it. Take a look at it. The pies will cancel out, which is why you want them on the bottom and the top. Yeah. You are going to multiply the top, divide by the bottom. Multiply the top, divide by the bottom. If you didn't have a calculator, though, you could uh, divide the 3 into the 180. You could uh, cross-cancel those and then multiply. But you have a calculator. Uh-huh. Multiply the top. Divide by the bottom. Multiply the top. Divide by the bottom. So how do we express this? Four pi times one The pies are gone. Oh, so four times one eighty. That's over three. Multiply the top and then divide. Somebody tell me a, na a number, please. 240. And please put the degree symbol. Please put the degree symbol. Multiply the two top numbers. Ah, okay. Divide by the bottom. 4 times 180 um, divided by 3. This time I'll actually go ahead and write in. Someone say, someone say what? Um, what is that? I didn't know if that was duck and cover. Like, oh, shit. Um, we got to the word up. What was the four times the 180 equals? 720. 720 over the four, and then when you divide that, it's 240. Take a look at the answer. See if it's weird. We don't press the pi sign. Pies cancel out, and the way you know it is this. And then I'll I'll ask you in a second what something something up. <laughs> Boom! Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you were saying something about the four. You gotta say Mr. Oh, uh, Thomas. Yeah, you gotta say it like that. All right. Take a look. I even has to. Any question? Any question? All right. Do me a favor. Do G. Do not do F and H. We need those uh, for different days. Call spiral um, practice. You do it one day, oh, I forgot about it. You do it another day, oh, you do a little piece another day, so that when you get to standard one, which I didn't write down, which I am when you, um, I pass up the last sheet, um, it'll be there. Now, again, and then I'll take hands after I saw one, they are not going to ask you the question just this easily for two of them. Two of them, they'll go straight forward. Please go from degrees to radians. Go from radians to degrees. The sheet that I'm about to pass out to you is kind of the way you'll be asked. Um, is there a hand? Are you going to cross off part of my What does this thing actually look like? We said the answer is 240. I know 270 is here, so 240 is like right about down here. Is it 270 is 270 is 340. Yeah. Uh-huh. So here's what it's saying. One whole pi, if, let me see if I can write this so they can see what I mean. This is going to make it harder. Yeah, this is a mistake. Alright, for brains who are, are yeah, okay, scratch it. Here comes. One pi goes here. If I had an extra third, I would continue down here. That's four thirds pi. That is, I got one whole pi, the whole first part, and then this extra piece. And let's do the answer. All right, uh, here we go. Let me go back and do. Um, I'm check marking. Hands up for check marks. Boom, going fast, fast, fast. Uh, I'm about to ah, cross. Four. So, one standard on the test, everyone in this room is guaranteed to get. This is the first standard on the test. They're going to try and make it seem tricky. Put their hands here. Yes, yes, no. Look on somewhere, that way they'll help you fill your bucket. Don't be alone. Uh, you're at the... Um, I'm 
Anybody else that gets signed, you had it. I went and checked up everybody. I did this whole row. We're going to do this uh, about three more times in a different language. And then um, I'm going to thank you. Standard one. What is the final answer on this one? Will you go up for me? Oh, is it all close? All right. Oh, no. It was still recording while I was walking all around. It's fine. You can edit it out later. Okay, we'll edit that out. Oh, I saw that. You can edit it out. Fine, I'll edit it out. Five, five, or six. Right, down. 900 on the top? Yeah. All right, cancel that. Uh -huh. nice looking out. I can find radian measures given a unit circle. All right, let's see if we can get that last piece. Write that down, write that down. It's on page one. Your name, class, color should be on there. Um, standard one should be on there. You'll also notice the upper right-hand corner of this page. Uh, does it have a number one on there? You'll see the little small number one. That's a reminder to me that this is standard one. What page am I actually trying to get you to go to? If we were to flip through, um, we we're going to try and get to 85. We can't do 85, 86, 92, 93. We're going to do those are the problems in the form that it might be asked. Now, some might be straightforward. Eventually, we'll come back and do some of the other sheets that you'll need for your six pages. But for the purposes of today, uh, let's see if I can get to 85. Now, will I always have to use that keyboard? Or is there a way for me to actually do it on the score thing here? No way. Yeah. So what are you trying to do now? Sometimes, you know, it comes up, you pop up, and you can type this stuff on the board itself. But oh, yeah, you have, you have to use the mouse. All right. 84? I said 84? 84. Yeah. Whoa. Or 85? I said 85. 85, 85. Oh, okay, so we're going to get like that. I like that. Oh, uh, this page, this page, this page. Yeah, yeah. You can do it. We can do it. Here it comes. <laughs> All right. Here it comes. Let's see if we can bring this down. How do I get this guy to come down? You are on 85. Unless I messed it up already. I'm on 84. Hey, I bless you. I don't all right, do me a favor, do me a favor. You have a circle in the middle of that page. On that circle, you are missing some of the um, degrees on the inside. Please write in the degrees that should go on the inside of that circle on page 85. Again, if you look at that circle in the middle of the page, they gave you 128. That's kind of nice. I appreciate that. They gave you a little square. You should be able to put in what number goes with a little square. Um, P, uh, angle P is missing an angle. Um, write him in. He has a little, uh, if he's next door to a square. Oh, man. I don't like it. Last one. Don't say it out loud, though. For the 128, I know that he's, um, on half of a circle. Half of a circle is how much, anyone? 180. You know, half of a circle. Good. Oh, I could just do that. That'll work. You're just putting in all the, um... So if, um, it's 180 and they gave me $120 out of 180 bucks, I need to know how much money I, I have left to complete that. It's a subtraction problem. Uh-huh. Uh, so tell me what it is, somebody. Somebody said 52. Somebody double check that just to make sure. Dude, I believe it. Oh, it's 52. We know the square. He's 90. 
We're not getting all the exams. We'll probably get maybe just one, maybe two of them. Um, all with 90 next door to each other because they have to add up to 180. These are just degrees. You haven't uh, done anything spectacular because the question that you're being asked is, and this is what I want to say, the way they're going to ask it uh, might be in code. In other words, uh, if they want to know, uh, maybe let's not do an easy, uh, a hard one. Um, if they want to know what the arc length of TC is, you're being asked for the arc length of TC. Okay. To get the arc length, uh, and let me actually put that down, arc length of TC, so that when they put the arc length, we have to know arc length. Um, arc length of TC because math people aren't trying to write a long sentence every single time they shorten it into this little code arc length TC the arc length of TBO oh, for those who are writing I'm not uh, I'm not gonna have you write the arc length of TBD uh, but I'm gonna try and find where it is uh, TBD T B D. Would there be no? Okay. Right. The, um, the degree would be um, the 180. Or for TC, the degree would be 180, but they're not asking you for the degree. Whenever they ask you for the arc length, you know what they're asking you for? Radius. Yeah. That is code for radian. So this thing here, whenever they ask you for the arc length, And that's the code that's going to mess up some people and stuff like, what? I don't even know. I don't even know what you guys are asking. Like, TC? Oh, duh. It's 128. No, no, no. Um, where's CD? Where's CD? Um, CD might be the uh, easiest one of this group to do. So, uh, well, no, really. Um, TBD. Let's do um, TC together. I'm rather sorry. CD. CD as in, uh, as in cat dog. All right. So here's the deal. What they're really asking is, hey, given the degree 52 for CD, you got to know uh, the degree. All the same, okay, so how much is the crust? Now I told you that the, um, the middle of the piece is 52 degrees. It is true. You have to make a um, plus sign. If you're going from degrees to radians, the way you kind of know which way to put that 180 in the pi, if I need to end with radians, that means I need to end with a pi. Pi needs to wind up on top. If I need to end with a degree, that means that 180 needs to be on top. Now, if you forget, obviously, you can go back to your papers. Uh, but here comes this one. We're just going to reduce a fraction, and we're done. This is the second semester of algebra. They're going to do some weird stuff in this uh, second semester. But what I want to remind anybody who either doesn't like math or math is hard sometimes, it really is all about words. Like, um, once they say find the radian, like find the arc length, if you know what the words are telling you, then you, all they're saying is, hey, I want you to write a fraction and reduce it. But they don't get to say they just switch it. How do you do it? Top times the top. Um, I would say bottom times the bottom. Technically, there's a 1 under the 52. Let's see if they can see this. 52 over 180. Now, this one isn't reducing all, like, nice and easy. But this first move here, let's say you had this on a test. I probably wouldn't be able to give you credit, but I would be able to say to you, you know what you're doing. The last part is just reducing a fraction. So when it's time to fix, uh, you'll be good to go. All right, um, what do you say? Well, let me do this for people who like wouldn't see it. If I had something weird like this, I'd just go ahead and divide by 2 initially, just to chop it down a little bit. Um, I would do 2 into the top. Now, some people who are good with math, you might see a bigger number. For now, let's mess around with the, t with the 2. Um, I know on the bottom, half of 180 is 90, so I'm okay there. Pi, you're standing in place. Uh, anybody know what half of 52 is? I think I got my 26. Again, if you're not super good in math, again, I'm going to recommend um, just mess around with 2 again. If they're both even, keep chopping them down until it's some obvious number. Um, I know I'm going to do the top. Let's see. I'm going to divide by 2 on you. Divide by 2 on you. And my goal on this one wasn't to have this long part problem, it was just to say, if you see the TC thing, how do you read it? Oh, I want the arc length, that is almost the radian, if you give me the degree. Um, half of 90, I know it's 45, I don't know what half of 26 is. 13? 13. Uh, Alright, and I think that thing stops there, I don't think the number that goes in the 13 and 45. 
Five goes in. Yeah, five goes in the forty-five, but it won't go in the thirteen evenly. Thirteen, no. Uh, thirteen is a prime number. It can only go into itself. How would a student know though? Look, if you do two chop downs and you get down to that last one, then I probably will want to work with you. Sorry about that long one there. Normally, the first reduce gets it done. Hey, what does he want us to know on this one? Does he want us to know um, how to put the plus sign there? No, the main thing he wants is, if you give me this kind of problem here with the um, arc, saying uh, how much is the arc, know that you're saying go from degrees to radians. We always want pi to show up in there. That will let anyone know, oh, if pi is showing around, oh, okay, they did radians. Yeah, I can do it just like that one. And they want us to back up to, um, nope. And they want us to go to degrees. So you're going to have to do it for me. Do I need to do something special, or did I go already? Are you talking about page radians? Are you trying to turn it off now? I'm trying to get to the next page. What, what page was on? 85, Alright, let me erase a bunch of stuff. Maybe it all looks the same. What are they asking us for on here? Find the measure of the central angle. Okay. It's the next page. Do you want to do this one? No. We didn't do this one yet. No, I mean, we kind of Oh, I see. Yeah, we did do it. Um, yeah, alright, so yeah, we don't need that page. Go ahead, do, um, on that page, fill in fill in the angles. Um, the, uh, I know I wanted this one. Please, either with a highlighter, highlight this thing called central angle. Highlight this thing called central angle. Like, if they say, oh, fill in the uh, central angle, I go, what? The? Um, TCP. So, one of them is given. Uh, can someone tell me what the central angle of T, C, P is? Or at T, P, C. Yeah. That one they just gave you, they just put it right there. That's the central angle. It's the angle that's hooked up right in the middle. Alright. Uh, let me see. Angle B, P, D. 90. 90. So for these, um, this isn't really a, a main part of your test, other than I need to know when they say central angle, what are you talking about? All right, let me see if I can do one other version of the thing, and then uh, I'll thank you. One other version goes to page uh, page 92. Let's see if I can get to page 92. What is the fraction that I'm going to use? Yeah, yeah. If I need to finish with uh, the this guy, you know pi has to be there if that's where you're ending uh, the 180. Uh, let me do that 40 over 180. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm going to cross out those zeros, because you can. Crossing out the zeros, for those who know, means you're dividing the top and the bottom by 10. That's what it really means. Uh, what number goes in the 4? Oh. 4 and a half. Alright. So the 2 goes in the top and the bottom? Yeah. Well, why did you do 2? You can do it this small. Um, these will always stay as fractions. They'll always do it this way. They won't um, do that version. 2 pi over, oops, sorry, over, what, 90? Oh. Well, we could have gone further. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. All right, perfect. If you don't have it, write it. If you don't have it, write it. Uh, let me do the other version, and then um, that'll be it. Let's see if I can get it in uh, 50 seconds or less. 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, do I have enough space here? I'm going to try. 7 pi over 11. Pi goes on the bottom. I'm going to end with the 180. Cancel the pi. Somebody, if you multiply 7 times 180, what does it give us? Uh, 1260. 12 who? 1260. Over 11, and you simplify it down to 114. Did we divide it? Yeah. What was it? 114. Oh, that's why she asked about the point. <laughs> For the most part on the test, they try and say what the decimal is. So, but what's true is, even if you get a decimal, show your work, and I'm okay with you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. If you were missed last time, stay. I need to give you some of your papers. Um,